Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're trying out a new product that I'm so excited about. These are the new Natasha Denona Concealer and Corrector. I knew when I saw these released on Instagram that I had to pick these up. So I have two of the correctors because you know me and corrector, I love to try them. And then I have one of the concealers. So we're gonna try them for the first time today. If you're new here, my name is Blair. I do all kinds of beauty and makeup content here on YouTube every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I hope you'll subscribe and let's just get started. All right, let's get into it. I do have on a little bit of my Fenty uh, Ease Drop Skin Tint and I already have my brows done. But other than that, it's all I have on my face. So let me zoom you in a little bit actually. All right, so now you can see up close and personal my under eyes. So let's talk about the corrector first. When these were released, I originally thought it was just a concealer and then later on I ended up seeing that she was actually releasing these as well. So these are the High Glam Correcting Concealers or Correctors. So they come in different color packaging than the concealer. These come in six shades, they retail for $30 and I have seen some things online about the shades in the corrector and the concealer being a little bit confusing. Um, so I'll kind of talk about that as we go. But I did get two shades in the corrector. I got C1 and C2. So I got the shade Fair and the shade Light. The packaging I do really like. I pulled these out of the box yesterday when they came just because I wanted to look at them. I like that she did a different uh, lid like this or a different top color than she did with the concealer just to differentiate the two. So this is the lightest corrector shade. So it's a doe foot. It's a little pointy doe foot applicator. I'm going to swatch this and I'm also going to at some point put some swatches of other color correctors that I use. I am very much a color corrector person. If you're new to my channel, I pretty much never go without applying color corrector. Even if I'm just doing like barely any makeup, I will put a little bit of color corrector under my eyes for darkness. I always have dark circles. I have blue, purple darkness under my eyes. I've always had it. I think it's just hereditary. So I'm always trying correctors. So anytime a new corrector comes out, you can bet I'm gonna try it here on my channel. So. This is C1, okay? So this is the number or the fair correcting shade. Just looking at it, it definitely has like a peachy undertone, but it's not overly peachy. So that's C1 and then I'll swatch C2 next to it. These feel very nice, I do wanna say. They're very like heavy and weighty. So we have C1, which is here, and C2, which is here. This one is light, this is fair. Light is obviously a little bit uh, darker in terms of the depth of the color, but they both have that peachy undertone to them. I always struggle with some brands with color correctors if they're too orangey and not quite a true peach. To me, peach should have a little bit of pink in there. Not too pink, but it should have a little bit of a pinky tone in there. Not super orange, but anyway, everyone does them differently. So I'm very curious about these. They definitely feel super like liquidy. They don't feel super thick or heavy. They feel very light. So what I'm thinking is we'll do one on each eye. This says it's a brightening and hydrating crease proof serum correcting concealer. So this also claims on the box that this will improve your under eyes and your under eye circles over time. I don't know if I believe that or not, but it does say that on the box. One other thing I did wanna mention about these, I watched her instructional video that she has on her YouTube channel and on her website. First of all, she says that if you just wanna buy the concealer and not the corrector, if you are looking to cover dark circles, your circles are blue purple, which is what mine are. You should buy a concealer shade with a P in front of it, so for peach. So 
If you're not wanting to buy the color corrector and just the concealer, and you have blue purple dark circles, you should buy a P shade concealer, depending on how fair to deep you are. If you have brown dark circles under your eyes, she recommends buying an R shade concealer. So one of the red rosy undertones for brown. If you're buying the corrector instead, then she's saying you can buy whatever shade concealer you want because you've got the color corrector on underneath. Just want to put that out there. It's kind of confusing. So let's go ahead and do shade C1 on. We'll do my right eye. I just have on um, a little bit of eye cream that I normally use. So that's all that I have under my eyes. So let's go in with this. So I'm gonna put a little bit here. I'm gonna start there. Sometimes I will bring some out here, but I kinda wanna see how far this spreads under the eye. Okay, now I'm going in with this small little brush. This is an AOA E104 and it is clean. And I'm just gonna start tapping this in under the eyes. Okay, so it's spreading quite a bit. So that's why I didn't put a ton out in the outer corner, even though I do have some darkness out there as well. So there it is. And that is the lightest shade, honestly pretty impressed. I was thinking that might be too light to do any correction on me, but I actually think it worked pretty well. If you are new to my channel, I take color correctors very seriously because I feel color correctors under the eyes in particular can make the biggest difference. And I feel like they are highly underrated and I feel like there's also not a huge selection of them. I mean, obviously there are brands that make them, but you don't have as many brands making correctors as you do concealers typically. Very, very smooth. And I'm pretty impressed with that color. I was thinking that was gonna be too light, but it looks pretty good. So far it is not creasing either. Okay, now we're gonna go into C2 and we will apply that on the other eye. Now this eye is typically a little bit darker for me than the other eye. So just keep that in mind. I'm gonna try to apply about the same amount. Okay, switching to a different brush. This is the Rare Beauty Concealer Brush and it is clean so there's no product on it. And I'm just gonna start Tapping this in. Yeah, so a little bit of this goes a long way. You definitely don't need a lot. So maybe start with less than you think you'll need and then you can always add a little bit more if you want. So we have C2 right here and C1 right here. Okay. So honestly, on my under eyes, once they're blended in, there's not a huge difference in terms of how they look. I mean, this one is definitely a little bit darker. It's a little bit orangier. You can kind of see when I turn to the side like that. Honestly, C1, I could probably wear on its own and just not put any concealer on over it at all if I really wanted to. I would typically always put a little bit of concealer on, but they don't look that different on my under eyes. If I would give any advice with picking a color corrector for under your eyes, it's typically safer, I would say, to go a little bit darker than it is to go lighter because if you use a color corrector that's too light or a concealer in general, that's too light over something that is darker, you are most likely not gonna like the result. It's probably gonna make your under eyes have a, a kind of a weird grayish, cast. So if you're unsure, I would say go darker. And I mean, they really look nice. Even this one, C1 that's been sitting there for like 10 minutes now, still looks good. It's not 
creasing. It still looks hydrating under my eyes, but it's definitely not like a radiant looking product or anything. I do feel like C1, so this side has kind of set down a little bit, so very promising. Very, very promising. Okay, let me go grab a few of my other color correctors and swatch them next to these just in case you kind of want to see it in comparison to other things. If you want to just skip to the concealer, I will remind myself to put timestamps below so you can just skip on to the concealer if that's what you're interested in. But I do want to give you some comparisons to this to my other color correctors because I know a lot of you come to me for that reason. So let me go grab them. All right, you guys, so I've got a bunch of swatches here. So this is C1 in Natasha Denona. This is C2. This third one is EXA High Fidelity Color Corrector in Peach. So right away you can see a big difference there. This to me is peach. This has a little bit more, there's a peachy undertone but it's more warmth in there. Some, I don't know, almost a little bit of a yellow tone in there. This is more of a true peach. Then you have Tarte Shape Tape Color Corrector in Peach right here. Tarte is definitely the darkest of the ones that I've swatched. I did a review on the Tarte Color Correctors when they came out. This shade can work for me, but it's too dark to wear on its own. It sticks out a lot on my skin tone. Then we have, oh gosh, um, this is Bobbi Brown in Bisque, which is like one of my holy grails. This is somewhat similar to these, I guess. Not quite as peachy as this, but still a little bit peachy. And then down here we have Pixie uh, in peach. So there are some comparisons for you. I'm kind of shocked that I'm liking these two as much as I am because I typically like something that's more peach. But I mean, these are working pretty well under my eyes. So I don't know. I don't know, but I wanted to give some swatches in case you are curious. Color correctors for under the eyes can be really tricky. You have to get the color exactly right for your skin tone, for your under eye darkness, for the depth. There's just a lot of moving parts, a lot of things that make a difference. So hopefully some of these swatches are helpful for you. Okay, let's move on to the concealer now. So this is the High Glam Concealer. I have the shade N2, which I had kind of a difficult time picking a shade. I kind of went back and forth between N2 and N3. I tried to go by the swatches of each shade, but sometimes going by the swatches is easy, sometimes it's not. I ended up going with shade two or N2, so a neutral um, in the fair light shade category, I believe. So typically I'm a light neutral. If I'm just picking, I typically go for whatever says light neutral. This, I realize, is actually fair light. So hopefully it's okay. So packaging is the same other than the color. So the concealer is like a tannish color wand, whereas the correctors are more of an orangey color. And this is, again, $30. It comes in 50 shades, which is amazing. I know a lot of people have said that the color range is confusing, and I agree. I think it is a little confusing, but I also think it's amazing that she did 50 shades. You just have to kind of figure it out. Okay, so this actually looks like a pretty good shade. So that is it there. Actually, I will say the consistency on this feels really nice. It's like, it's definitely a serum-y texture, but sometimes serum concealers I find don't have a ton of coverage to them, but this one actually feels and looks like it's going to. I actually think maybe that's going to be a good shade. We'll do this side first. This is the side we did with uh, C1. I'm just gonna do about that much. I'm gonna blend with a different brush and this is also clean, so there is no product on here. This is the A506 from B6. 
BK Beauty. So little, again, goes a long way. You do not need to cover your entire under eye with this, with product, because it really does spread. Actually, I think I might have nailed the shade match. I was worried this was going to be too light, but I think it is actually fine. I did want to note also, I was noticing in the ingredients, it says fragrance on this. It's pretty low down in the ingredients, but I did want to tell you, it does have a, t a little bit of fragrance to it. It smells just a little bit floral. Like if you, you'd have to really like smell for it <laughs> to smell it. It's not anything that I think you'd notice if you didn't know it was there by looking at the ingredients, but it is there if you really smell hard, just so you know. Um, but I don't smell it on my face or anything. That looks really nice, you guys. It is. It does claim to be a matte finish. So I'm curious if this will set down and look more matte. Right now it looks, I would say like a natural finish, a little bit radiant, but not super radiant. It looks nice though, you guys. So I would say this amount of product that comes out when you pull the wand out is enough. You, you don't need any more. This is actually too much. Just keep that in mind. Now I'm gonna blend this side. So there you have it. So we have C1 and N2 on this side and C2 and N2 on this side. I'll have to see when I watch this footage back, but in person it doesn't look that different, the two sides. I mean, it looks really good as of right now. I am not noticing a ton of creasing. I feel like the darkness is definitely neutralized. Typically, like I was saying earlier, I would go for something that's just a little bit more pink. Not super pink, but just has a little bit more of a pinky tone, not so orangey. But... I'm pretty impressed with how this looks, to be honest. Um, I'm not gonna powder my under eyes. I'm not gonna touch them at all. I'm just gonna leave them, I'll do the rest of my makeup, and then I'll come back and we'll see what they're looking like. I am also going to wear this makeup all day and I will do a few check-ins for you so you can see how this wears throughout the day because anytime you're layering products, anytime you're trying a new concealer in general, you want to see how it wears, but especially if you're layering a corrector and a concealer, you want to know how it wears throughout the day. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of my makeup. I'll come back and show you what everything looks like. I did the rest of my makeup and I did set my face everywhere but my under eyes with some powder. So I have not touched my under eyes. Honestly, you guys, I hope it picks up on camera looks pretty good. They definitely have set down both sides to more of a matte finish. So that I do agree with. Honestly, I don't know that you would really even need to set this concealer or corrector just based on the way it dries down. I don't know. Maybe you could, but we're not going to do it today because I just want to see how these wear throughout the day. And I mean, I gotta be honest, I'm pretty impressed. I do think Depending on like how I have my head, and this is true of all correctors and concealers too for that matter, you know, you can still see a little bit of my darkness peek through, but that I would say that's pretty normal. You're not going to find a product that's going to totally cancel out anything underneath your eyes unless you really, really cake on the product and then it's it's just not going to look good most likely. So overall, I'm pretty impressed with this. I do think I prefer something with a little bit more of that pinky tone to it like I was saying earlier, like something like hopefully you saw in the swatches earlier, something like this that has a little, it's peach, but it has a little bit more pink in it. That's all, that's the only way I can think to describe it. These have peach undertones for sure. I wish they had a little bit more pink in them. These are pretty full coverage, I have to say. I do have both of them on obviously, so I don't know how it would be if I had just gotten a correcting concealer shade. Like I said earlier, she suggests if you're not gonna get a corrector for underneath the concealer and you have a blue and purple 
hue or darkness under your eyes to get one of the P shades in the concealer to try to combat the darkness without a corrector. If I had gotten just that, I don't know, you know how much that would have done on its own. But with the two layered over the top, the coverage is pretty good. I would say this is approaching full coverage. But what I'm the most curious about is how this will wear throughout the day. So I have to leave the house and do some errands. So I'll be back in a few hours and we'll see what it's looking like. But as of right now, I'm pretty impressed. But I will see you in a few hours. All right, you guys, it's been about five and a half hours since I applied this makeup and I wanna show you what my under eyes are looking like. I've been gone all day running errands and I just got home. I have not touched up my face at all with anything other than a little bit of lip oil. And this is what my under eyes are looking like. Honestly, I'm pretty impressed. They look pretty good. Definitely very matte, extremely matte, and we have no powder on, so there's that. I mean, I definitely do think, I don't know if it will show on camera, but I mean, I definitely do think there's some settling like right here in this area, but nothing extreme. I mean, let's be honest. I know it says it doesn't crease, but if you have lines and you have creases, everything you put under your eyes is going to crease. I don't care what it is. That's just the way that it is. What you really want to determine is how bad is it creasing and how well does it wear overall. I do think there's definitely a little bit of settling happening, but honestly, that is normal after five and a half hours of wear. I haven't lost any coverage, I would say, so that's good. Hasn't moved around. It has totally set down. It honestly looks like I've set my under eyes with powder, even though I didn't. It looks a little bit on the dry side, but again, I'm not shocked by that. Concealer under the eyes after five or six hours is probably gonna look a little bit dry. But overall, I'm pretty impressed with this. I think it's worn pretty well considering it's pretty hot today. I've been out and about all day, haven't touched up with anything. I think it looks pretty good, but I'm gonna wear this for the rest of the day and I will see you in a few hours. Okay, it's the end of the day. It is, or it's been about eight hours of wear on this makeup and I just kinda wanna give you my final thoughts. So. First of all, my makeup in general has worn really well today, but that's not what this video is about. But, okay, under my eyes, here's my thoughts. It wore really well in terms of longevity. I, I don't feel that I've really lost any coverage. Honestly, it's really stayed in place all day and we have no powder on. For the fact that it's been on eight hours, I have not touched up. I did not powder under my eyes. I've been on a walk. I've been out and about all day long today and it still is there and it looks pretty good. That's very impressive to me. I would say they are the most similar in consistency to the NARS Shape Tape. I prefer the color though on these. Shape Tape in Peach is just it's pretty dark and pretty orange on my skin tone. So I have to add quite a bit of concealer to be able to cover that up. What's nice about these is they do correct because they have that peach undertone, but they're not so orangey that I have to apply a ton of concealer on top to cover it up. Do you know what I mean? These are almost, especially the first one, C1, I could get away with wearing it on its own. So I would say if you have pretty significant darkness under your eyes, like the depth of mine or darker, I'm assuming you would want to do the corrector and the concealer and not just pick a correcting concealer tone. If you have slight discoloration under your eyes, maybe you have just a little bit of blue or purple tones under your eyes, I would just say follow Natasha's instructions and get one of the P shades in the color range, depending on if you're fair, fair light, light, medium, and so on. But overall, I think it's a really nice formula. I like that it does set down on its own, so you really don't have to powder it if you don't want to. 
In terms of the claim about it not creasing, I mean, I don't know if it will pick up on camera, but I mean, I definitely have some little tiny creases. So I think like anything else, if you have creasing or fine lines and you put a liquid product there, you're gonna get creases. I'm gonna say these, these correctors, are gonna go up there with some of my very top favorites, like this EXA one. Very similar to this. This one's a little bit thinner. Natasha Denona is a bit thinner. I have to say, I prefer the Natasha over the Tarte, for sure. I like the Tarte fine, but I love the color on these much more than this one. And honestly, when it comes to color correctors, more so than the formula and the product, usually the most important thing is the color and the shade because that's what's gonna make the biggest difference in your under eyes. Overall, I would say these are thumbs up from me. I'm really happy with them. The concealer is also very nice. I think even if you don't need color correction, this is a really nice medium to full coverage concealer. I think these are nice. I'm very impressed with this and I'm actually very happy that I picked these up even though they are pretty expensive. They're $30 a piece, but I think the formula is very good and I love that she did 50 shades. That's amazing. Everybody can find a shade. I also love that she released correctors with the concealer. I feel like you don't see that often. Sometimes brands will randomly release a color corrector, um, but I feel like they don't normally release them with concealers, and that's smart. I feel like that's a really good, different thing that she did. So I hope this video was helpful. I know a lot of you wanted to know my opinion on the correctors and the concealer, but especially the correctors. I hope you enjoyed the video. I will list them below for you and link them. They are affiliate links, so I do make a small commission if you do shop through them that supports me and my channel. I will have everything else listed below that I have on my face today as well. If you are curious, make sure to subscribe if you have not already and follow me over on Instagram at simply.player and TikTok simply.player1. And I will see you next time. Remember, simply be you. Bye.